So the first job is to adjust my tripod so it's the right height. And I have just seen something amazing. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here. And uh, today you are joining me back in my local nature reserve. Uh, now I came down for <laughs> waterfowl and uh, I've been in the water for, I don't know, God, half an hour, 20 minutes, just getting set up as the lights started to come up behind me. Conditions are immaculate. I've got the wind straight into my face. I'm low in the water and about 30 meters away in front of me, just behind a little spit of land, there is an otter feeding out in the open. And I'm really hoping that he's gonna come round out in front of me. Um, you know, the thing is with wildlife photography, you only get what you put in. And so, you know, scouting this location the other day and now being down here in position before first light, fingers crossed, it pays off with a couple of images. But I'm gonna shut up and focus because, uh, you know, I can't speak too loudly. So the first thing I'm doing is making sure all my camera settings are ready. I'm at f4, 1000, at 250th of a second, and uh, you know ISO 2000 to make sure I can get that shutter speed because I really want to freeze the action as he's moving around in the water. Um, but hopefully, hopefully he'll come out in front of me. But oh, if not, who cares? Just so awesome to see one of those guys right out in front of you. So he's diving down to get fish and then popping up to the surface every couple of seconds. Just push my settings to f8 rather than uh, f4 uh, simply because I just want a bit more depth and because I'm nice and low in the water it doesn't actually matter in terms of that nice depth of field because um, I'm still getting uh, the backgrounds well off in the distance so it's not a problem at all but uh, oh, he just headed down to get some fish and I can't see where it's gone. So far, I've got a couple of nice pictures of his tail up in the air, but nothing, nothing perfect. He still keeps feeding around the edge of this uh, spit that's in front of me. But the good thing about that is it gives me a bit of cover uh, to get the shots when he creeps out um, off to the side. One thing you might also notice is I don't have the beautiful Swarovskis anymore. Uh, my loan period of two weeks was up and I've sent them back. But uh, I definitely think in the new year they are gonna be my kind of probably January, February purchase because they're absolutely great. I mean, these have lasted me forever, but they are pretty heavy and bulky. And I still think that even with the object lenses of um, the object lens of 30 mil on the other ones, is they're just, the optical quality is so much better. But anyway, these will do the job for today. So a bit of field craft. Um, the reason I actually spotted the otter was because I noticed that all of the waterfowl had kind of moved uh, to the other end of the, uh, the lake where I am. It was a bit odd because when I scouted it the other day, there was absolutely tons of them down here. And uh, often when that happens, you often have a predatory animal in vicinity. And that's one thing that a lot of animals do is they'll kind of like slowly move away. I mean, the otter's not probably gonna go after one, especially because it's gonna be hunting fish. But, you know, just for their safety, they'll always move away. So if you see that kind of thing in the field, um, it's always great to get your binoculars out, give a quick scout uh, and see what's in front of you. Because, you know, then looking for disturbance on the water, just a couple of splashes or anything like that, I could see the low body and the tail flick up. And then of course I knew it immediately was an otter. Nothing else has a tail like that in a lake like this. Um, so, you know, just always looking for those signs is a really important thing to do when you're on location. Um, and you know, again, just keeping these things in mind and when you see stuff, noting it down in the book so that you know next time, this might be a really good spot to just keep coming back to uh, in order to get some otter pictures. But you know, so far, cracking morning. Um, even if I just get the tail shot, 
whatever, really, really nice. Sat on my back foot that isn't the most comfortable seating arrangements, and it's getting stuck into the little bit of mud that's behind me. But, oh, there's some nice swans up there. Now, I didn't have time a minute ago, but I'm just gonna stick my gloves on, because the thing is, these white hands, you know, these big white sausages aren't the best thing for keeping yourself concealed, so I'm just gonna stick my gloves on over my hands. And also, it's a little bit chilly in here at the moment. That's wildlife for you, absolutely unexpected. So the otter has uh, swum back into the side of the lake, so whilst the activity has died down for a minute, I thought I'd give you a quick uh, look at something I am testing at the moment, and that is the new fluid gimbal from uh, Gitzo and you know Manfrotto, Manfrotto Gitzo. Now this is awesome. Now I know a load of you will know that I'm a big fan of the Wimbley Mark II, have been for many many years. Um, but when this came out, I was really interested. I got to see it, uh, kind of a little preview at the bird fair that was really nice. And there's a couple of key bits and specifications about this that really caught my interest. Now, firstly, it's a bit lighter weight because um, it's not solid aluminium. It's, uh, you know, it's a cylindrical, it's got air inside. So that means it's a little bit lighter in weight. That's really nice when you're carrying a lot of gear. But the key thing for me is, although Pretty much everything looks the same as the Wimbley. You know, the design is lovely. It's the, um, the Gitzo um, matches all the Gitzo tripods, everything like that. But what is really cool is the fact that, as you'll see, it has a pan bar here. And that's because it has a built-in um, fluid mechanism. So when you move it slowly, you actually get fluid motion like you would with a proper fluid video head. Um, but then when you turn it quickly, you get that freedom and flexibility and you know quick action nature of the Wimbley head. And the reason that's really cool for me is especially for when I'm out shooting and stuff like that, and there's times when I really kind of want to get those video shots, but know that I'm probably not going to get as many video shots as I am um, stills. So I really want the Wimbley head, but there's moments when I'm like, oh damn, I wish I had my fluid head. So this now gives me the option to completely have a Wimbley the whole time, yet still have that fluid motion when I need. Um, and it's just really nice to be able to do that. The fluid isn't as good on the tilt as it is on the pan, um, but largely for most of the stuff I'm doing, it's the pan that I'm worried about. Um, but it's really, really nice to use. Um, the ergonomics of this are great. You've got these really nice big twisty um, locking knobs that of course are perfect for if you're wearing gloves like I am now. Um, and largely, you know, it's actually really, really good. Um, solid enough that it'll easily carry the weight of a uh, 604, 300, um, 400, 2.8. I've got my 300, 2.8 today. You know, and just perfect for so many things. And one of the great things is, it's actually 200 pounds cheaper than the Wimbley. So um, the reason I wanted to give it a good test out, and I've been using it, you know, last probably week or so in the field, is I wanted to know if it was a good option to recommend to people if maybe the Wimbley was just, you know, just out of the price range. But even now for me, I am actually considering the idea of going to this rather than my Wimbley, um, especially the full Wimbley, because the option of the ability to do those pans, for me, is just really, really handy and a useful addition in the field. Um, and I think that's the thing that I look for when manufacturers bring out a new product. You know, you see people just blatantly copy the Wimbley. You see, you know, absolute nailed on copy. They've just done the same and they make it from cheap manufacturing. It's not very good. Whereas what I think Manfrotto and Gitzo have done here is they've made a product that actually builds on what a, what a Wimbley and what a, um, what a gimbal head can be to make a product that's really, really cool. And um, just then when the Otter came out, you know, I had absolutely no problems using this exactly as I would the Wimbley. Um, you know, didn't really notice any difference between the two. And the fact that the, um, you know, the pan bar is also removable means that if you just want a slightly cheaper but really well designed and thought out uh, gimbal head, then the uh, new fluid gimbal from Manfrotto is certainly something I would uh, recommend. Oh, 
just missed a tiny little grebe out in front of me. Right, I'm gonna shut up and get back to taking pictures because the light's starting to come out and it's very, very nice. Oh, I've got pins and needles in my legs. Oh. Right, so I'm gonna end it there, guys. You know, really was just a quick behind the scenes of me getting down and getting out on location and you know, really didn't expect that otter to show up today. It's just so cool. Gutted I didn't get a little bit of footage, but you never know, it might come out again. Um, but you know, I'm just gonna end it here. Um, this will be my last video before Christmas probably. So have a cracking time, enjoy the festive period with your family and friends you know hopefully you get out and get some photography in as well you know but right now I'm going to enjoy my last day out on location of uh, of 2017 and fingers crossed hopefully catch up with that otter a bit more so anyway crack on shooting and I will see you again in 2018 for loads of new uh, wildlife photography content but until then I'm going to enjoy my morning setting my waders up up to my chest in it and uh, yeah I'll catch you soon.